let's have a discussion of the inguinal hernia to understand the inguinal hernia we should have a very clear three things number 1 that is layers of anti abdominal wall with the boundaries of the inguinal canal number 2 hasselbeck triangle number 3 ligaments that are infra umbilical ligaments which gives fold to the peritoneum and formation of fossas in between we had already seen layers of anti abdominal wall and boundaries of the inguinal canal in my previous lecture so we start with the infra umbilical ligaments so here this is pelvis over this there is a deeper most layer of, of the anti abdominal wall and that is peritoneum so here this is bladder showing you apex of bladder so ligaments that is a median umbilical ligament from the apex of bladder to umbilicus gives you the fold over the peritoneum and that is a median umbilical fold of peritoneum lateral to that there is a other fold and that is a medial umbilical fold and this medial umbilical fold is because of obliterated umbilical artery still lateral to that there is a inferior epigastric artery and that gives you a lateral umbilical fold and because of this three fold there is a formation of fossas and that is a supravesical fossa medial inguinal fossa and lateral inguinal fossa here we have to recollect one thing more that is a inferior epigastric artery lateral to this there is a deep inguinal ring which is a starting point of inguinal canal and here you will get the superficial inguinal ring which is the end point of inguinal canal after the ligament we start the hasselbeck triangle so hasselbeck triangle bounded laterally by the inferior epigastric artery inferiorly by the inguinal ligament so inguinal ligament is here in between the anterior superior spine and pubic tubercle and medially by the lateral border of rectus abdominis muscle so rectus abdominis muscle is lying in this way and here its lateral border which gives the boundary to hasselbeck triangle so we can see here this later hasselbeck triangle it divide into two that is supravesical fossa and medial inguinal fossa which is medial and lateral part accordingly by medial umbilical ligament now we go to the hernia in a hernia general it's a protrusion of the content of the cavity through its wall and here it is a inguinal hernia so it is a protrusion of any abdominal content through the inguinal canal is known as a inguinal hernia these inguinal hernias are two types they are the direct inguinal hernia indirect inguinal hernia if we define the direct inguinal hernia so any abdominal content when give force over the hasselbeck triangle and through this that content is protruded into the inguinal canal and passes through the superficial inguinal ring we call them a direct inguinal hernia now we divided this hasselbeck triangle into two medial and lateral part so when it is protruded through the supravesical fossa they are called medial type of the direct inguinal hernia if it is protruded through the medial inguinal fossa that is called lateral type of the direct inguinal hernia in indirect inguinal hernia instead of passing in between somewhere cav inguinal canal it passes through the deep inguinal ring so from the deep inguinal ring when it passes through the inguinal canal and exit through the superficial inguinal ring that is called a indirect inguinal hernia most commonly indirect inguinal hernia are congenital type during the descent of the testes the some part of peritoneum which is attached to testes are taken at the base of scrotum that is known as a processus vaginalis this processus vaginalis cover the testes and known as a tunica vaginalis and rest of the processus vaginalis they are get fibrous and remains in the spermatic cord now suppose if this processus vaginalis don't get fibrous then 
they remain patent now this remain patent at different level and according to its level they are classified into vaginal funicular infantile and interstitial if it remain patent throughout its course and the tunica vaginalis is a open cavity for the processus vaginalis then any content passes through this deep inguinal ring or pass through the inguinal canal and reach up to the base of scrotum here doctor cannot palpate this testes separately from the content of this hernia so that is called a vaginal type of the hernia if this tunica vaginalis is a separate cavity and the processus vaginalis get fibrosed just above the level of testes then the patent processus vaginalis and tunica vaginalis are the separate cavity so the doctor can palpate testes and the content of hernia which passes through this processus vaginalis separately and that is known as a funicular type of the hernia if this remain patent up to the level of inguinal canal it means somewhere from the deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring we called it infantile type of the indirect inguinal hernia this processus vaginalis remain patent and if it passes in between somewhere layer of anti abdominal wall that is either skin and external oblique muscle or external oblique and internal oblique muscle or internal oblique and trans fascia transversalis then it passes in between the tissue content is also passes along with it and that is called interstitial type of the hernia now we see the difference between the direct and indirect inguinal hernia we had seen that the entry of the content in the indirect inguinal hernia is through the deep inguinal ring while the entry in the direct hernia is through the hasselbeck triangle here that is a hernial sac which is coming out through the deep inguinal ring so the neck of sac is lying lateral to inferior epigastric artery here in direct hernia the neck of sac is lying medial to inferior epigastric artery in indirect inguinal hernia we know that it is because of congenital abnormality it can occur in the age between the childhood to young age here in direct hernia as it is coming out through the hasselbeck triangle that is because of weakness in the anterior abdominal wall and this weakness secondary to any disease that leads to increase in intra abdominal pressure like cough constipation so it is mostly occur in the old age and most of the time bilateral instead of if we see in indirect hernia it is a unilateral or maybe a bilateral now if we see the covering of this hernia in the oblique hernia is indirect inguinal hernia the processus vaginalis along with the content is passes through the deep inguinal ring and through the superficial inguinal ring so covering first covering is the processus vaginalis of peritoneum if we recollect the layers of the anti abdominal wall outside the peritoneum there is extra peritoneal tissue still if we go outside there is a internal spermatic fascia that is a fascia transversalis still outside there is a cremastric fascia and that is modification of internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle if this content is passes through the superficial inguinal ring we got the one other covering through the external oblique muscle and that is external spermatic fascia if it pass into the tissue of the scrotum we got the modification of superficial fascia and that is a dartos muscle and lastly skin so these are the coverings of the indirect inguinal hernia if we see the direct inguinal hernia it is coming out through the hasselbeck triangle so if it is a lateral variety after coming out through the lateral part of the inguinal canal it passes through the superficial inguinal ring 
so covering our same as inguinal canal as we had seen in the indirect inguinal hernia but if it is coming out through the medial part of hasselbeck triangle it is lying more medially near the border of rectus abdominis vessel where you will get the conjoint tendon and reflected part of inguinal ligament conjoint tendon is combination of transverse abdominis and internal oblique muscle while the reflected part of inguinal ligament is the fibers which passes from the lateral crush of superficial inguinal ring that is medially and upward so these two fibers are lying on the posterior part of the wall of inguinal canal which gives covering to this hernia so from the peritoneum extra peritoneal tissue then there is a fascia transversalis conjoint tendon reflected part of inguinal ligament extra sorenetic fascia dartos muscle and the skin so these are the coverings of the medial part of the direct inguinal hernia one more hernia is there with the this two hernia over the inguinal canal and that is a sliding hernia here in the sliding hernia when process of vaginalysis passes through the this inguinal canal and some content is passes through this process of vaginalysis along with that extra peritoneal content that is on the on the right side it's a cecum on the left side it is a sigmoid colon or on both side it's a urinary bladder which is passes through this sac of the peritoneum along with the other content and that is known as a sliding type of the hernia to diagnose hernia we can take the ring occlusion test so here we press the finger over the deep inguinal ring and ask the patient to cough if the hernia is evaginate coming out as a swelling on the medial side of our finger it's a direct inguinal hernia if it is not coming out and just giving jerk to our finger that must be a indirect inguinal hernia